Everybody, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you tuning in. Today we are going to filter and cake our homebrew. Um, what I have here with me today is my homemade hard apple cider. Um, you can also do the same method with any homebrewed beer that you have. Um, you could also do this with a mead, wine, uh, pretty much anything you want to keg and filter uh, will work at this, uh, with this method. So like I said, you obviously have to have your brew, got that right there. Other essential equipment, you need to have two kegs, both of them empty. One's going to be your original receiving keg. So when I rack off of my fermenter, it's going to go into my uh, initial receiving keg. And then I'm going to run it uh, through the filtration system and it's going to be into my final keg that I have over here. Need to have CO2. Um, this is a 20 pound CO2 tank. You can also use your 5 pound CO2 tank. I have uh, my regulator. I have it set on about 5 PSI, 4 to 5 PSI is pretty much all you really need. Um, other equipment that you're going to need is obviously your filter. This is a, a pretty simple inline filter right there. You've got your filter cartridge. This is a uh, poly sediment cartridge. There's no charcoal. It's just straight uh, poly wrap. It's a one micron filter. So what that really means is the first half of this is a five micron, and then the second half of it is a one micron level filter. And so that's what's going to filter everything out for us. Then you have obviously your, your lid for it. You have your two connection hoses. Those hoses are going to connect to your um, ball locks for coupling to the kegs that are going to connect to the kegs. You have your auto siphon. You need that originally to get out of your primary ferment or your secondary fermenter into your initial keg. And then, of course, a bucket of sanitation or sanitizer. Excuse me. Um, sanitation is absolutely key in this because you're now dealing with your final product. So any transfer of any weird icks, bugs, anything in the air can really screw up your homebrew and waste all that time that we've spent on creating this wonderful homebrew. So let's get started. I'm going to kind of go through step by step. Okay, so step one, we're going to take our uh, freshly cleaned and sanitized keg ready to receive. I'm going to hook up my 20 pound CO2 tank to, um, to this and what we're going to do is basically just get a nice CO2 blanket in the keg so that way as we're racking in our uh, as we're racking in everything it's going to uh, hit a CO2 blanket and not hit oxygen which Kind of hear that, and then I just run this, like I said, at about five psi, and I'm just going to run this for five, ten seconds, and that's going to give me enough of a CO2 blanket in the bottom of my sanitized keg that I don't have to worry if there's any splashing about uh, oxidizing my homebrew. So then we will turn that there. So now I'll take that off, set that to the side. So now I have my auto siphon which has been sitting in my star sand sanitizer so I'll empty that out for those of you that it's your first time using star sand don't worry about the bubbles the bubbles are not soap you're not contaminating your beer it's supposed to look that way I know it's weird the first time I dealt with it I was freaked out because there were so many bubbles I was I was gonna swear that I was gonna have a soapy flavored beer but so anyway, I'm take the airlock off now. And then we are pretty much just going to do a gravity feed into the keg of our homebrew. Now I'm going to come grab the camera to kind of show you the setup here. So as you can see, the auto siphon is right there. She's running the hard cider down and into the top of the keg. And then that's obviously going to pool right down there in the bottom. So you can see, take note, if you can see it, see how cloudy that is. That's the yeast still kind of in suspension a little bit. Um, you can see the, the start of the, of the brew before we filter it. 
So that is step one, is to get it into your first keg. Okay, so we have step one going right now. Now we're moving on to step two. You can kind of see I've hooked up the second keg to my 20 pound CO2 tank. You can kind of hear it a little bit right now. What I'm doing is I am running CO2 in through the keg and pushing it out through the top release valve here to try and get out as much of the oxygen as I possibly can because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this keg once it's completely purged of oxygen to help purge my filter unit. So what I'm going to do is I'll be putting in my filter cartridge in here getting this all ready to start receiving our wonderful homebrew. So how I do that is once this is free of oxygen and it's nothing but CO2, I'm going to bring this up to pressure. Once the filter is all ready, I'm going to connect this one here to the outline and then I'm going to start running CO2 in through the filter system and then I'm not going to have a, a, a ball lock on this end and I'm going to let it push and run all that air out and you occasionally smell a little bit and it starts giving that tickle on your nose like a like a soda pop does normally, then you know that you don't have any more oxygen sitting in there. Um, that's key because as this beer is filtering, if you've got bubbles in here, you don't want oxygen bubbles circulating around with your homebrew, you might oxidize your beer. Um, with a hard cider, not such a big threat, but with a beer, absolutely a big threat. So you have to purge out all the oxygen um, from your filter cartridge. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that here in just a minute. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the filter cartridge out. I'm going to look inside, I'm going to visually inspect it, make sure that there's no issues with the cartridge. My hands, I just got out of the sanitizer, so my hands are completely clean. I'm looking to make sure there's no rips, tears, holes, nothing growing on it, you know, anything weird. Again, this is 100% uh, a poly filter, one micron inside and a five micron outside. So I'm going to place that in my filter cartridge, get that lined up. Get that turned in and locked on. Now you have your purge valve on the top here to help purge air out. That you'll use when you start filling it with fluid. But I always want to make sure I've got no air in there. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to... I will be connecting up my ball lock valve here onto that. So this is my inline, which is going to come to the outside of the, of the canister that you see here. And then it's going to flow, the gas will flow through the filter and then come back up and out my outline right here. And then I'm not putting on my coupling right there because I don't want to just pressurize the thing. I want it to actually flow and push all that CO2 out. There we go. And you can see a little bit of the water kind of kicking in there. That's actually sanitizer, which is fine. It's not going to hurt the system at all. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start letting that run. And you can feel the air kind of, you smell it now and it's just air. It, it doesn't tickle your nose. It doesn't hurt or anything like that. Give that probably about 10, 15 seconds of running. And then eventually you're going to start, uh, when you bring it up to your nose to smell it, you'll smell the CO2, you get that little that effervescent tickle in your nose that you do like when you have a soda pop and you pop that one. Oof. Yep, there it is. Alright, so I'm going to turn off my CO2. I've got that. And so now I have a nice sealed filter. My filter has been purged from oxygen. So if there's any bubbles that I see in my filter later on when I start filtering, it's just going to be CO2. I don't have to worry about oxidizing my beer. So that's step two. Okay, so here's the last and final step. We're now going to filter the beer. So the beer has been racked out of the uh, secondary fermenter. It's now been put into my nice clean and sanitized keg. I've got the CO2, as you can see here, from my CO2 tank hooked up to my inlet valve. I have burped the top, 
basically meaning that I've taken out all the oxygen from this keg, so that way I'm not putting any pressure to force the oxygen into my brew. And then next I'm going to connect up my filter. One connection is going to go to the outlet here, and then the next connection, and, and this is important, needs to go to your out connector as well. Do not put it on your in connector or your gas connector because then your beer is going to drop down. Even though you've got CO2 in here and there should be no oxygen, it's still going to splash around and it's going to froth up and then when it gets close to the top you're going to end up having beer spitting out of your uh, pressure valve on the top. That is the other last thing to remember is your little pop top and your little pressure valve up here. Make sure that that is in the open position. Otherwise, eventually the pressure will equalize between the two kegs and your beer is just going to sit there and stare at you. It's not actually going to filter and run its course on through. If the top of your keg does not allow you to stay open, no big deal. Just pop the top and just let it sit open. That way there's no pressure to it. That's all it takes. So now we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So connect that onto here. And you can see how the beer automatically pushes in and it's starting to run and you can see how it's filling up there. And then now we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect that onto here. And then once that's good to go, once this fills, I'm going to release the pressure up here. Then it'll start working its way through. Now you can see the filter as it's filled up and it's now pressurizing so the outside of the filter is full of the cider and then now it's pressing it through that one micron filter and then eventually you can see how cloudy it is here going into the filter and you should be able to see there how much clearer it is. It may be hard in the video but trust me it is a lot clearer. So now what you're going to do is you're going to adjust your rate. You're going to look at, you can see some, some of the CO2 bubbles there and see how fast it's going through. Just simply adjust the pressure in your, adjust the pressure in your, um, your main keg here. Lower the pressure if it's going too fast. You can lower the pressure and then it'll start pushing through a little slower. Do not want to push it through fast because if you push it through fast, you're pushing through sediment and things like that that you don't want to get into it. Okay, everybody, this is a conclusion of how to keg and filter your homebrew. Hopefully, uh, I've answered any questions that you guys have. At the very end here, once everything's run its course on through, Pretty much lock up my keg, purge out any oxygen that may have leaked in there, force carbonate it, and then uh, in about a week I'll be enjoying my homemade hard cider. Nice, crisp, clean, filtered homebrew. Enjoy!